Nothing ruins your day like a parking ticket. And I think to myself, what a bunch of frigging assholes! But it's not always bastard government revenue raising! It's to blame. This parking ticket, for example, is from one of those bastard private parking companies. Ah! These private parking tickets often come from those annoying pay and display car parks where you have to go and get the ticket yourself and put it on the dashboard. Private car park operators have obtained hundreds of thousands of driver's details in Victoria alone to issue them with payment notices. But are private parking tickets even legal? Or to put it another way... What you gonna do when the private parking police come for you? I'm going to check with a lawyer. I need a lawyer! Ah, to defend the little guy. Over a traffic offence. I'm a lawyer who committed a traffic offence. Not you, Einfeld. I'm a traffic lawyer. Step into my office. The thing is, private parking companies can't actually find people. Aha! What do you call this, then? All the lawyers in the car park. Steady, Einfeld. Only governments can issue parking fines. And private car parking companies know it. They're trying to claim from you a fixed amount for breach of contract. But if what they're claiming is over the top, if it's out of all proportion to the loss they've suffered because you haven't paid for your parking fees, then it may be an illegal penalty. Indeed, last year, a Victorian tribunal found that an $88 ticket was unenforceable for that very reason. Of course, car park operators defend their practices. Secure Parking says it's necessary to deal with parking abuse. Wilson Parking sticks to the party line, saying their tickets are a genuine pre-estimate of their loss. And the CEO of Australian National Car Parks acknowledged receipt of our letter. Which is better than Care Parks, who didn't even care to reply. Steady, I'm felt. So these private parking tickets are on shaky legal ground. Excuse me. Double parking? At the abandoned amusement park? Step on it, Einfeld. But you probably won't get the impression that there's a legal question mark over private parking tickets from the way that they communicate to you. That's because they just want you to pay up, because you think that you have to, or because you're worried about what'll happen if you don't. They even offer early bird specials on their dodgy fines. But if you don't pay up, get ready to be bombarded with letters from debt collection agencies, lawyers, and the car park operators themselves. And consumer group choice even found cases where the different firms chasing you for the money were run by the same people. I'm not the same people. And neither am I. The letters often contain very official sounding threats like seizure and sale of your asset, deduct money from your earnings, your credit rating may be affected by this action, this letter is printed on recycled paper. All that is possible, but only if the parking company actually takes you to court, wins the case, and then you still refuse to pay. What should you do if you get a ticket from a private parking company and you believe the amount's excessive? Well, the payment options on the back tell you how you can dispute the fine. State Fair Trading Departments recommend contacting the car park company to dispute the ticket. Secure Parking's Code of Practice says it suspends all enforcement action when they get a written appeal. And unless you're a repeat offender, they err on the side of cancelling tickets if you're a valid user of the car park. But this can be a bit of a trap. Because if the company doesn't have your contact details, getting in touch with them to dispute the ticket gives them that info. Now, the New South Wales Department of Fair Trading seems a little bit hesitant about the idea of just not paying the fine, which you can kind of understand because their legal status is tricky and they are a department of the bastard government. The Consumer Action Law Centre says that one option is to do absolutely nothing. 
Traffic lawyer Sean Hardy agrees. If you're unhappy paying their claim, the best response you can give is to do absolutely nothing. Indeed, while they're chasing the registered owner of the vehicle, it's the driver who's actually responsible for the debt. Best advice ever. If the parking companies do get your address, though, they can be pretty persistent. In 2013, New South Wales Fair Trading reportedly received more than 4,000 complaints about Australian national car parks, though the numbers have dropped off since then. If you've had enough of ignoring your ticket, though, you might want to complain to your friendly bastard government. Fair Trading says that last year, over 90% of complaints were resolved without the need for costly legal action. But if you do need to, you can make a claim in your state consumer tribunal. The Consumer Action Legal Centre has a template that you can use so your argument can be framed into proper legal terms. Not again, Einfeld. Did someone call a lawyer? Just because these private car park tickets might not be valid doesn't mean that you can park there for as long as you want without paying. If the amount on the ticket isn't excessive, then the companies may be able to enforce them against you in court. If you do get a court order, don't ignore that. Lawyers from community legal centres or consumer groups can give you free legal advice. Oh, that reminds me, am I getting paid for this? Oh, I think I left my uh, wallet in your office. Step on it, Einfeld! <laughs>